Joining me now, a rather familiar face, former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien. Nice to see you, Monsieur Chrétien. Nice to see you. You're doing well? Oh, I'm in good shape. Excellent. So uh, we're 35 years on since the, the charter came into this country. Where, where do you think it has left us? What, what would you say is, is the legacy of the charter for you? But, you know, it's an example. Uh, it's a charter that uh, there was a lot of negotiation. As you know, I was a minister responsible with all uh, the provinces. I had many meetings with the attorney generals of the provinces. And every group in Canada came to make representations. Mm -hmm. We had a joint committee of the Senate and the House of Commons, where I was the witness for days and the long, long time. And uh, sometimes I'm shocked when I know that they're quoting me in the Supreme Court because very often I had to make up answers in front of the members. <laughs> I could not say all the time, I don't know, I would check. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm very happy with the results. Uh, you know, people, uh, it was very popular at that time. It's still popular today. There's not many flaws with it. There was some controversies at the yes. time we did it. Uh, a lot of people did not like the notwithstanding clause. Mm -hmm. I was for that because I felt that uh, you know, we needed that. Uh, you cannot completely rely absolutely uniquely mm -hmm. on the courts. But to, to come back on them, it's a very difficult thing. So we never used the notwithstanding clause. So, but it is, uh, it's there and uh, it's working well. And uh, for example, uh, the right for receiving education in French everywhere in Canada, in yeah. English, the same thing in Quebec and so on. You know, it's working very well. and. Uh, People uh, take it up to have their right respected, and the evolutions of the in the courts, you know, the, the element of this, the, the element as a discussion that yeah. the charter is always part of the debate. Well, so you talk about criticism. There are mostly on the conservative side, but elsewhere as well, criticism that the that the charter gave too much activist power to judges. And we, we saw it last summer when the Supreme Court put in place the Jordan decision, which put a limit on how long trials could be in, in front of the court. Yeah, do, you, do you think that it made the Supreme Court but more if activist? It, if the Supreme Court, it's why I'm happy with the notwithstanding clause. Yeah. If they were really to be overboard, they know when they write something that the government can overrule it. They don't. Right. But I'm sure it's a break. Now, in terms of administration, sometimes some people think that they, it's always a debate. Uh, the judges don't agree. They are coming from different backgrounds. They have different philosophy. Mm -hmm. Here, we don't appoint judge based on political yes. stripe. It, it's, um, I name many judges uh, recommended uh, as Minister of Justice and as Prime Minister. And, you know, it never been a big consideration if they had voted for or against me. Mm -hmm. It was not that. I look at the background, I look at their CV, the type of judgment they had passed. For me, I preferred to appoint the judges from one level to another one. I think that it's more secure because some great lawyers could become very bad judge. Of course. And some very ordinary lawyers become very good judge mm -hmm. because it's kind of different frame of mind sure. and a different approach and so on. Where, where, where do you see Quebec? It, 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 will Quebec ever be part of the repatriation of the Constitution? Is that important anymore in your view? But for me, uh, you know, there, it would be nice if they were to be there, but it is not the only situation. The same situation existed in Germany. Never Bavaria signed the Constitution of Germany. Mm -hmm. And they are a country that functioned well since a long time. And, and, and you know, the first provincial government to use the new constitution was the Bouchard government to change the system of education in yes. Quebec. That was to make it no more based on religion. Mm -hmm. So he was the first one to use it after blaming us to have it. <laughs> so, you know, everybody use it in Quebec. So, of course, it would be better if they had signed, but they have not signed and we have to live with it. And, and, the, and, and the there amending, will never be a time when they will, you think? That I will never know. happen? I, I don't know. Sleep over that. Do you? <laughs> well, no. I don't so, think about it that no, often. Nobody <laughs> lose sleep over that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's there, and it's a tuition we, we live with, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not to worry about it. Uh, it would be nice. But, you know, you have to realize that those who said no, the number one clause in their program was separation of Quebec yes. from Canada. I remember Claude Charon telling me in the negotiation, John, you know, we will never sign because of goal of our party is to separate from Canada. So why should 
Do you think we can sign a new constitution for Canada? I knew that day that mm. it was an exercise that they were not to be in, and at the end, they were not in. Uh, I want to ask you about President Trump a little bit. And here's how I want to ask you about it. Because you, when you were prime minister, you had to, you had Never to deal with... Never been president, with, I was prime minister. Yes, but you had to deal with a president who was sometimes difficult, sometimes hard to get a hold on, George W. Bush. And you, you made decisions, right? Big decisions you in the face you of... You know, I started to deal with the Americans yeah. in trade when I was minister of industry, trade and commerce in 1978. So I know them pretty well. And I know that we have an agreement, but we win in courts. They don't respect that. But the reality is what? Is I was prime minister for 10 years, mm -hmm. and I had no problem. And in fact, it is my government that passed NAFTA. People forget about it. You know, they could not pass NAFTA when I became prime minister. The first thing that President Clinton mentioned to me the morning after I was elected was can I help him? Mm -hmm. And I said, I will help you if, if you give me some changes to the deal. And he gave me, for example, water was excluded and other things. And we negotiated more, and eventually it was passed. And what do people forget is when it was passed, it was passed by something like 25 vote in the Congress, all the Republican voting with Clinton and on the half of the Democrats. So, you know, when you look at the presidency of America, you know, one of the frustrations when you're prime minister, very mm -hmm. often they will tell you, Jean, you're right, George Bush or Bill Clinton, but I, there's nothing I, I can do. do. Yeah. So if you cannot do anything, the guy who is there cannot undo very thing, many things either, yeah. because he is blocked by the Congress and the Senate. But, but is it, do you think it is time for NAFTA to be tweaked? Do you agree with but, that? We had to make adjustments. Yes. We had to make deals. Yes. They never respected the free trade agreement they had with us on softwood lumber. Mm -hmm. So we had to make compromise. We will win arbitration. They will not respect that. So we made deals. But during the time that I was there, more than 10 years, I never had a major problem with NAFTA. But it is, you know, when you have trade of something probably not $2 billion a day, yes. it's sure that you have problems. You know, you have problems in Ottawa, in the city. Sometimes we're not happy <laughs> with the way they do things. So imagine when you have $2 billion, yeah. you know, of trade a day. So there are problems, but we're there to solve them. And, and when you have to, though, negotiate with someone who can be difficult or unpredictable, how, how do you manage that? Yeah, but, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, the Americans, I, I was... Now it's kind of easier for us because we have balanced trade with them and we don't have a big surplus. Yes. During the time I was prime minister, we had surplus of $40 billion a year in trade. And I was kind of laughing. I would read the American's newspaper and magazines. Oh, we have problem with Japan. We have problem with China. Never mentioned Canada. And I would tell my guys, shut up. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. So, you know, you, you, so we have to... To stay calm, I, I, you know, they, they asked for my views, yes. and I gave it. Don't, don't, don't be don't too nervous. Yes. Don't do too nervous. Of course, uh, you know, uh, they know that I have a lot of experience. So ministers come to see me and others, and you know, they discuss things with me. Of course, I don't tell you every day that they no. call me, and uh, and uh, but uh, I'm happy, but I don't want to be the mother-in-law either. No. So, uh, you know, if they want my advice, I give them to them, many ministers and so on call. But, uh, but, but when, you see, when you see Trump yesterday go off about supply management, for instance, you, you, you think that we shouldn't get too worried about what, when but he does it's that. it's always been a problem. Supply management. All the time. Yes. And we survived it since 19, uh, you know, NAFTA started in 1994. So it's 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. We managed to keep it this way. Can we stay forever? I don't know. I'm not the government, and I don't know what the government will do. It's a delicate problem because it's, it's, a, it's protectionism. Yes. But we have many protections between the provinces in Canada, mm -hmm. too. You cannot be a doctor in Ontario and move to Quebec mm -hmm. or vice versa. And so, you know, you know Canada... 
The advantage we have is we're faster, smaller and faster. They are big, but, as, but the elephant don't move very fast, mm -hmm. so, and it's very complicated. So I think that we will probably do well because it's a working very well, the free trade with the United States. Their problem with Mexico, we don't have problems with Mexico. And uh, I'm not sure that they will be able to, you know, the jobs are not lost because of trade. Most of the time it's uh, robots. Yes. Somebody was telling me the other day, if they manage to kill in the auto parts business, the jobs in Mexico, what will happen? He said to me, he said, a worker in Mexico is cheaper than a robots. And a robots is cheaper than a workers from Michigan. Mm -hmm. And the business community, they, lie, they might like the president, but they look at the bottom line too, quite more importantly. Mm -hmm. Last question. When, you, when you're watching what's happening down south, because I, I see you're a bit reluctant to talk about the president himself, although you weren't so reluctant before he became president. But when you watch what's happening down south, does it worry you? Or, or do you think that even though we are their closest neighbor, it, it's okay? It'll be okay? But, um, you know, I've been around since a few years. <laughs> I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many people. I'm, I'm not too nervous. The reality will hit him. Yes. And... Uh, and they have a communication of a different way because now the Twitters and all that. Mm -hmm. And but, you know, I kind of laugh because, you know, apparently the big military ships was not going there. Yes, I saw that this morning, not going that? to North Korea, um, yes. I only remember my opponent in one election who didn't know that the water was coming from America, not vice versa. You remember that? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of, I kind of laugh. You know, the Armada was going there, and it was not going there. So, relax. And I think that, you know, our relation would be good with them. Uh, most of the states, their biggest clients, mm -hmm. oh, it's Canada. And the Americans never buy anything from us because they like us. One day when they were worried, when I said no to the war in Iraq, mm -hmm. the business community came to see me. They were very nervous. He said they will retaliate. And I, but I said, you sure? I said, give me the list of all the goods and all the services that the Americans are buying from us. Just because they like us. I'm still waiting. <laughs> because business <laughs> is business. And in fact, there was no retaliation. You know, they, they stopped calling French fry, French fry for a week. OK. Prime Minister, I could go on for hours, but we won't. Hours. I'll leave it Me there. Too. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Thank My you very pleasure. much. Merci.